How's it going, Eliminators? Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to drain fuel out of pretty much any container by using just a rubber hose and an air compressor. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So whenever I'm working on a piece of equipment that I have to do a carb clean on, I always drain the fuel tank. One of the main reasons for draining a customer's fuel is the equipment's not mine. So the only thing I can do is really take my customer's word for it. And even if one of my customers says, you know, don't drain the fuel, I just put a full tank of premium fuel into it. I ask them if they made sure the tank was empty before they filled it up. And I'm going to tell you nine out of 10 times, they say that they don't know. So now you're mixing fresh fuel with old fuel and you're going to get some fuel that might not even combust. And even if the piece of equipment has a clear fuel filter such as this, I don't know whether that's fuel or water. So one of the things I'm going to do is disconnect the fuel line and drain some of that out into a jar so that I can get an idea of whether or not that's fuel or water. So if I spend the time to remove, clean, rebuild, and reinstall a carburetor, and I hook that fuel line up with my customer's fuel in it, that's questionable, and I'm spending time pulling this piece of equipment over, trying to get it started, and I could be thinking about all these other things. Maybe it doesn't have spark, maybe it has low compression, when the whole time it was the fuel, and I could have prevented that by simply draining the fuel, putting my own fresh fuel in that I know is good. Now, things like weed eaters and chainsaws, they're going to have relatively smaller tanks, so basically you can just take the cap off of them and dump them into the jar, it's quite simple. Whereas, whenever I'm working on a generator, I always find that the fuel tanks are completely filled. It's as if people think that filling the tank up is a good idea so that whenever the power goes out, they'll know their generator has a full tank of fuel and they can just fire it up. However, one of the issues is that tank's gonna be filled and if your power does not go out for a year and a year and a half, or even if the power goes out, but it's not out long enough for you to go ahead and pull out your generator and fire it up, that fuel is gonna be sitting for years. And that's what I see a lot of times, instead of just leaving that fuel tank empty and filling it up whenever you need the generator. However, you may just wanna transfer some fuel from one container into another. So in today's video, I have a jerry can here marked with, you guys can see, old fuel. And I wanna see the condition of this old fuel if it looks really bad. So what I'll be doing is transferring some of that into this little glass jar down here so I can have a better look at things. And to do that, I am going to be using a little rubber hose here, an air gun, and just a little cordless drill. So the general theory behind this is you're using a high pressure directional air at one end of the line and you are going to get a low pressure suction at the other end of the line and to basically use this air gun inside of this line, you're going to take a drill with a drill bit that's a little bit smaller than the tip of your air gun and you're simply just going to drill a very small hole into the end of the fuel line. You don't have to go right near the tip. I find that uh, leaving it a little higher is a little better because then you can kind of get it into the glass jar or another jerry can. Now your hole doesn't have to be drilled perfectly. You guys can see that mine's kind of on an angle here. And that's actually good because what we're going to be doing is taking the air gun and we're going to be putting it into the hole and aiming it downwards into the tank that we want to fill. And once you have your tubing going from your container of old fuel, we're just going to put the other end of the tubing into our clear glass jar. And with our compressor air gun here, we're just going to give it a blast of air. And that will start the transfer of fuel because we have a directional high pressure air going this way, which creates a suction at the other end on our jerry can filled with old fuel. Now you can go ahead and pull out your air gun there and that fuel will keep draining until you want it to stop and all you have to do is lift up on the tubing and that will drain the rest of the fuel from the tubing there into your glass jar. Then you can have a look to inspect what kind of condition you think it's in. Now this fuel here doesn't look all that bad. There's not a lot of debris in it. In a lot of the older generators with metal tanks that I get the fuel looks completely brown and I would never want to use that in a vehicle. Whereas this looks pretty clean. However, giving it the smell test, 
I don't think it really passes. So what I would normally do to reuse some of this old fuel that I pull out of my customer's equipment is just revive it with a little bit of K100S plus fuel stabilizer and maybe even a little bit of octane booster. However, I don't know if there's water settled in the bottom because we can't see through this jerry can. So one of the cool things you can do is if you take your tubing and put it all the way down into the bottom of your jerry can and then do this same transfer trick, what you'll be doing is pulling fuel from the bottom of the jerry can. And whenever you have water in your fuel, water will always settle to the bottom. So as long as you let a jerry can sit overnight and you're not moving it around, all of that water, if there is any in there, will settle to the bottom and you can put your tube all the way down at the bottom and drain right out of your tank into a glass jar. You'll be able to see if there's water in it. Now, even after I go ahead and freshen this fuel up, I will not be using this fuel in my 2019 Ford F-150. We will be putting this in the older 2006 F-150 because that thing pretty much runs on anything and I've only been running premium in the newer truck. With that being said though, even after you've transferred your fuel into a clear container, had a look at it, you know, determine that it's not that bad of condition and you can still freshen it up using the products that I mentioned, you won't know if there's a bunch of smaller debris in it. So to filter out that, I have this funnel right here. It's called a Mr. Funnel Portable Fuel Filter, and this thing is awesome. I'm probably gonna be doing my own separate video on this just as a, a product review because I use this thing all the time and it is absolutely amazing. Basically, dirty fuel in and you get pure fuel out. You're gonna notice here at the bottom though, removes water, dirt and debris from fuel. So how would it remove water? Well, the filter that's in this funnel, it's right there in the center, is what's known as a hydrophobic filter. It repels water. So even if you had a little bit of water in the bottom of your jerry can and you wanted to transfer that into a nice clean tank to remove the debris, this Mr. Funnel portable fuel filter would also filter out that water and then you wouldn't have to do the little trick that I just showed you, which is putting the tube to the bottom of the jerry can. Now, if you're using a smaller diameter fuel line like I am and you're noticing that it's just not draining fast enough for you, you can increase the diameter of your line to go ahead and drain your tanks. Because the diameter of the line is larger, it will pull a larger volume of fuel through that line. However, I have noticed that the initial purge of fuel to get that suction and that flow started is a little bit harder because you have to push more air through the larger diameter line to get an increased suction at the tank. However, one of the biggest reasons that I use a smaller diameter fuel line is it just pulls the fuel through the line slower. So if I had something like a generator here, I could go ahead and hook up my fuel line, start the transfer process, pull the carb off if the fuel line was a lot harder to get at than one of these. You know, if I have one of those, I'm just going to pop the fuel line off with the fuel valve shut off and then go ahead and drain it into a tank on the ground, which you guys would have saw in my video when I freshened this thing up and got it running after it had been sitting for so many years. Now, with that being said, there are a whole bunch of products that you could use to transfer fuel from one container to another. Another one that I have here is this little tool here, which has a one-way check valve on this end. So there's like a little ball bearing in here. And what happens is when you put this into your tank, you start lifting this up and down. And what happens is when that check ball comes up, it lets fuel in, and then the check ball goes down and does not let that fuel back into your jerry can. So the more you lift that tube up and down, the more fuel fills that line. And then once you get the fuel to hit the apex of the tubing, that's where it starts to bend down. Then what happens is the siphon effect takes over and it'll just keep draining again until you lift that line out of your jerry can. So I'll just quickly show you how this one works. Basically, you're going to lift it up and down, like I said, and then you're just gonna keep doing that until the fuel starts to drain into your line. And then like I said, this one goes pretty quick because the diameter of the fuel line is larger. And if you want it to stop filling your tank, just lift that up. It starts to suck air and that's it. Now you can go ahead and check your glass jar. You guys can see just how quickly that one filled. 
because of the larger diameter. So that's one of the reasons why I kind of prefer the smaller diameter, just because it's a little bit slower and a little bit more controllable. So even though that one fills jars a little bit quicker, you're limited by the length of the tubing. Now, I suppose you could just put that check valve on the end of pretty much any line, but at least with this method here, the air gun, the rubber tubing, you could pretty much get you know, 10 or 20 feet of tubing if you needed to drain or transfer fuel from one tank that was farther away from another, maybe on a farm or something. I'm not too sure, but yeah, this technique, it's tried, it's tested, it works. And I just wanted to share it with you. Well, that's going to wrap up today's video. Like I said, very cool and interesting thing that I wanted to share with you guys. And I do use that method from time to time to transfer fuel from one tank to another. But with that being said, if you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week. So be sure to stop on by next week, check the channel out for new content. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. <laughs>